So thank you, Jackie. That's one of the toughest passages we've had in quite some time. Hope Paul gets to read it at 11. I chose lovable and capable women. <laughs> it goes just right with the text. Our second text is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 5. Listen for God's word. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Before we pray, I also want to thank the praise team for their anthem today. At staff meeting, Becky said, we're doing that friends thing. I hope it'll be OK. I'm not sure how it fits. And by the providence of God, it was just right for today. Let's join our hearts and minds in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I was shocked. After years of Sunday school, I was shocked to learn that the promised land was not empty when the Israelites went there. The people lived there. And as the story goes, the Israelites were commanded to drive out all the people in the bounds of land that God gave them. And they did some of that, but not thoroughly. The people of that time seemed to live in a cycle. They went about living among the Canaanites. Some intermarried. Some came to worship the Canaanite gods. Under some rulers, the Israelites were oppressed. And when life got tough, the Israelites cried to God for help. And God would raise up a leader. These were the judges a leader who had good wisdom and military skill. There would be a battle, and the Canaanites would be defeated, but never wiped out. Life would be better, and, and the Israelites would slowly slip back to their old ways. Over and over, this cycle happened, which brings us to today's text, when about 1,150 years before Jesus' birth, 3,000 years ago, the wise, skillful person raised up as a leader was Deborah. Deborah lived in a close relationship with God and was able to speak God's will. She was a prophet, a messenger for God. She was also a judge who sat under a palm tree and she made judgments for her people and, and those who came from afar because of her ability to adjudicate disputes. What a gift to her people in the midst of a time that was viewed as a time of chaos. It was a time when the Canaanites were oppressing them. So the Israelites called out to the Lord and God raised up Deborah who was able to stir up the scattered and frightened people of Israel and unite them in overcoming the oppression of the Canaanites. She called Barak, head of Israel's army, to get 10,000 men to meet Canaanite generals Sisera and his 900 chariots and vast well-supplied army in battle. Deborah trusted the outcome in the field to be decided by God, 
Barak was fearful of the odds. But he knew that Deborah knew God's plan. So against his fears, he agrees to do it if and only if Deborah will come. Against all visible odds, they had a decisive victory. Another day, or in Sunday school class, perhaps you'll want to explore how, when, and if God demands war. But what I hope we can take out of this story today are two things. One, God can neither be trifled with or blatantly ignored. And two, Barak and Deborah's victory is emblematic of God's concern that oppression not be permitted to stand. And then there is a third thing. That lone verse from chapter 5 at the end of the poetry version of Deborah's story, may your friends be like the sun as it rises in its might. Deborah and Barak acted as God's faithful friends in this story. And in so doing, each was also friend to the other. Deborah had said to Barak, up, for this is the day. And it became the day that changed everything. Which takes us to the text from 1 Thessalonians. The Christians of Thessalonica are fearful, and they're stuck on when will Jesus return. They're really asking, am I secure? Am I safe? And to that, Paul addresses these words that we read today. The translation would be more accurate to say, since we are children of the day clothed with, since we believe that God stands both at the beginning and at the end of human life and that humankind remains accountable to God for its behavior, then we need to, we can, engage in mutual encouragement and corporate edification. We're not to be caught up in the feverish fits of clock watching. Our text says, put on armor. But the tense of the Greek is aorist, that is, past tense. This armor was put on us by God in baptism, as it will be for Lincoln today. A breastplate of faith and love, made up of a commitment to God and Christ, faith and concern for others, love, a breastplate of the great commandment, a helmet of hope, the hope of salvation that frees us from earthly fears and power run amok. Up, for this is the day. And with that breastplate and helmet, meet the day and encourage one another and build up one another. We are profoundly connected with one another so that the needs of others in the community are understood to be one's own needs as well. May your friends be like the sun as it rises in its might. May you be like the sun as it rises in its might for your friends and fellow travelers. To be that kind of encourager, to be that kind of person living into baptism, to be a friend to God and neighbor like the rising sun, it takes commitment, it takes courage, and it takes candid sacrifice of time, talent, treasure, our very selves. Yesterday I was scrolling Facebook. Reverend Susan Rothenberg, our speaker for Women's Breakfast next Saturday, 
lives within sight of the Tree of Life synagogue. Her son catches the bus on that corner to school. She heard shots. Anne Himmeline worked at Presby last night in the ICU where victims are recovering. Gina Strawbridge, a former member, wrote from London, checking in on all of us. As I scrolled, the headline came up, the day everything changed. We in this town know that's exactly the headline when events like stabbings and mass shootings happen. Chaos swirls, making destruction with total disregard for life. But that headline, the day everything changed, wasn't about the synagogue shooting. The whole headline was this. The day everything changed, experienced the Christmas story with my handcrafted nativity set. Jesus' birth was the day everything changed, or, or maybe it was Easter. But it promises that the chaos, the trauma, the grief, the fear are not the last word. Deborah, Barak, Paul in his word to the church, the great cloud of witnesses we celebrate on All Saints Day this week, every person who is willing to claim their breastplate of faith and love and their helmet of hope, God counts on us to live out a vigilant commitment to the works of light, to be for the world friends that rise like the sun as encouragers, as stewards of every good and perfect gift that comes from above. Invest, as the hokey pokey says, and put your whole self in. Keep God's blessings alive, that hope may prevail. God knows our neighbors need to see the signs of that hope, to know it's worth believing and hoping that shalom is a real hope and a real promise. To that, we pledge ourselves for another year. And because we do, and because we are profoundly connected, I invite you to pray as I offer a portion of a prayer from the Jewish tradition. Will you pray with me? God of the survivor, God of the mourner and the witness, grant solace and peace to those still head, held by physical, emotional, and spiritual distress from acts of terror. Remember now those who are suffering from trauma after the attack in Squirrel Hill, and even still from our own event a few years ago. Release them from visions of death and destruction. Bind their wounds with your steadfast love. Lift them on your wings of kindness and grace. Blessed are you, God of healing, source of strength for survivors of violence and tragedy in every land and in every age. Blessed are you, source of hope and comfort. Amen.